Hi, Nicholas Dingle here again for another tutorial for VB.net 2013. Today we're going to go through what's called a class. Now this is only going to serve as an introduction to what classes are. They're actually extremely powerful devices when used in programming. And as you get more and more experience with programming, you're going to notice that you use them more and more often. However, what we're going to do today is just give you an introduction, show you how to use them and how they're really helpful just to begin with. And then later down the road, in probably about four or five videos, I'm going to do a more advanced version of classes and introduce a lot more concepts about them. All right. For right now, what you need to know about a class is that they are heterogeneous. Okay? Jenny use. All right. What this means is that they contain different types of, da of data, which means that a class can contain a string, an integer, a boolean, a single floating point number, all in one. Okay, And you can do that just safely. And the whole idea of a class is to sort of bring an object from the real world into programming. And for an example, this program, what we're going to do is we're going to allow the program to add in a student, modify a student, and just view student data. Okay, and in that one, what we're going to do, the student's going to contain a couple of pieces of information. They're going to have a first name, they're going to have a last name, and they're going to have just a date of birth. And realistically, what you would think, before you could use classes, what you traditionally do is just dim three variables just for that. So you dim a first name a string, dim a last name a string, and then dim a date of birth as a date. A little bit more information about a date later on. But basically, this would be the traditional way. You make three variables, first name, last name, date of birth. But what if we wanted to add in a second, or maybe a third, or even a fourth student? Well, realistically, we'd be doing these dims every or three lines for every single student. So I could do this and call them first name, last name, and date of birth two. And then I could make another one and do first name three, last name three, and date of birth three. But unfortunately, then we'd have to keep track of which student we're up to and then do massive if statements based on that. And realistically, we will do something similar to that. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a student first. Okay, class, student, and class. All right, so what I'm basically doing is telling Visual Basic I have a class, I want to call it student, and in between that is everything that constitutes a student in my program. So remember when I said that you're trying to bring a real-world object into programming? Well, I'm a teacher and I have students in my class and I need to remember their names and let's say maybe their date of birth. Well, realistically, I'm taking the real-world object of a student and bringing it into Visual Basic. And what you do in a class is you can essentially take variables and put them inside. But we're not going to use dims in this case. We're going to use what's called publics. All right? Now, there are some people that might know about classes or know a bit about programming that are probably screaming at the television right now saying, this is bad practice. Realistically, I'm only serving as an introduction. This is just basic. So what I've essentially just done to Visual Basic is create a student and say that a student contains a first name, a last name, and a date of birth. Okay? So let's quickly set up our program. Okay, for some reason I didn't have a submain. And let's set up a nice, neat little menu inside here. So let's go, welcome to student database. Whoop. Wow, my typing is terrible today. And let's say, for the moment, let's add a student. Okay, let's just keep it simple for the moment. All right, so dim selection as a char. While selection does not equal, let's go D for this case, okay, and I'll fix that up later. Selection equals console dot read line to upper, and let's do a quick if statement. If selection equals A, then what do they want to do? Well, they're going to add a student. So let's put our code for adding a student in there. So realistically, we have a thing called student, and student contains three fields that we've set up, or these are sometimes known as fields, they're sometimes also known as properties, and they're sometimes also known as members. Okay, Members is probably the term that I use more often than not. So realistically, we want to access the first name first. So let's 
the user choose what that first name is going to be. So please enter a first name. And there's nothing special about this. Realistically, if I want to access first name, then we do a read line on first name. First name equals console.readline. Here's the problem though. Visual Basic does not know what first name is. First name is not declared. Well, realistically, it is declared. It's up here, but it's inside of our class student. And before you can access a class, you actually have to declare a variable of that data type. So what I mean by that is, right here, I have to go dim student1 as student. So what I've effectively done is I haven't created a variable as such up here, but I've created a data type. Okay, And then you create your variable of that data type. And now I have access to first name, last name, and date of birth through student1. So what I mean by that, if I come down, instead of just first name, you put student1. dot, And there it is, first name, and last name, and date of birth. All these other ones, get type, get hash code, equals, and two string, they're all built-in functions for classes. You don't need to worry about them. We're just going to stick with first name, last name, and date of birth for the moment. All right. Same code two more times for last name, date of birth, last name, please enter a date of birth, date of birth. All right, so that's going to set it up. We're going to be able to add in the student's first name, their last name, and their date of birth. And let's just give them a pleasant little message saying, student entered, exclamation mark. All right, and then we'll clear the screen, console read line them and then I'll clear the screen. Okay, so pretty much our, our code's pretty well to go, and we'll press start and give it a shot. Welcome to my student bay database, let's add a student, enter the first name, Bob, and it crashes. Okay, if you ever get this error here, and I did intend for this error to happen, believe it or not, this means here, object reference not set to an instance of an object, it's actually talking about student one. See how it says nothing? What actually happens in classes is by default, they're allocated no memory. Okay, when you create a regular variable like a string or an integer or a boolean, they automatically have memory attached to them or RAM, if you want to call it that. The problem is, when you create a class, by default, they don't have anything attached to them. So you have to tell Visual Basic, give me some memory space. And it's quite easy to do. All you do for this case is you dim student one as a new student. Okay, and that there will tell Visual Basic, allocate some memory for me, get ready for some incoming incoming stuff. So let's try this code one more time, and realistically, it should work. So let's call him John. Bob is born the first, the first, the first. Student is entered, and we're back on the menu. And just for shits and giggles, I'll type in D and exit the program. Okay, so really, that works perfectly fine. So let's add in two more little functions. Let's add in, well, no, let's just add in one more little function. Keep it simple today. To view a student. And I'm going to change my quit to C. Okay. So there's C. Let's call it quit. And let's, tr let's just put the code in for view a student. This one's going to be pretty damn straightforward. So else if selection equals B, hen, that's totally what I meant to write in there. Okay. Console dot right line students first name. And how do we access the first name? Well don't forget you put the variable name first and then the member name. First name. And you have to do that two more times. So let's do it for last name and date of birth. Last name, date of birth. Oops. And then put in a quick read line and put in a quick clear. Okay. So we're going to start the program up. If I type in B, it's going to show nothing <laughs> except for a weird date. But if I go to add a student, let's go John, Bob, 
First of first of first. Have a look at him. Dunskis. Okay. So what have I done essentially there? That might look like it's just tedious because essentially all I've done is I've made three variables and I've made you have to declare another variable and then have to put in student one in front of all your variable names. So that might sound really convoluted okay, and tedious, but what we've essentially done is organized our information into one object. So first name and last name and date of birth are all part of one student. So what you do is you make an abstract object or just an object of students. All right? And the reason you would do this is twofold because later on in the advanced video, I'm going to show you some really cool things that we can do. In this video, what if I wanted to make a second student for my program? Well, really, before I had to go first name two, last name two, date of birth two. However, this time it's much, much easier. I just have to go dim student two as new student. And all of a sudden, student two will have all the properties of student one as well. However, they won't be shared. So what I mean by that is if I just pop my cursor there and type in student two, you can see it's got a first name, a last name, and a date of birth as well. In one line of code, I've managed to do that. Okay, and that will be the same for student three, student four, student five, and so forth. Okay, and it just means that our code, our variables are really organized and we can make lots and lots of them really, really quickly. Okay, and pretty much that's where I want to stop for this video. We're just going to keep it really simple today. In the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you some really advanced things such as arrays and lists, and we're going to get right into some things. So, see you in the next video, everybody. Fun programming.